Hey, what's up? I'm DJ Sixman. This is Sit Down. Margaret Josephs is here with us. She's got her brand new book, Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget. Love it. Margaret, it's really nice to meet you. How are you? So nice to meet you, DJ. Thanks for having me. So you've had this really interesting career between what you've done in the fashion space. People know you from TV with The Real Housewives of New Jersey. What was it like writing this book and just talking about your whole story here? Well, you know, writing this book, I said, was very therapeutic and cathartic at, this, at the same time. Everybody knows me from the show. Uh, that's about 25% of my life. And I thought everybody should know what happened to me before I got on Housewives and how I got there. Built my business. Uh, grew up with my mother in the 70s, a single mother, which wasn't common then. Uh, and how, you know, I had my successes in business, my pitfalls in business, uh, working with men in the 80s. It was so different then. So I thought it was just would be very interesting for the reader to have and inspire people to really pull themselves up by the bootstraps and show everybody how resilient we really are. There's so much to a person's story. And you mentioned a really a bunch of different interesting things. Why don't we start with your mother? You mentioned the fact that it wasn't commonplace in the 70s to be growing up with a single mom. So how did that shape you? And what did you want people to know about that experience? Yes, I just, you know, I wanted people to know that an unconventional childhood doesn't definitely define who you're going to be. I mean, I always say I'm not from the lucky sperm club. <laughs> that, that was definitely, that was definitely a given. And I saw things in my mom that weren't conventional. She was definitely a party girl, drank too much. I, that could have pushed me into the opposite direction. But instead, I learned from that. And I don't drink, I don't do any substances whatsoever. It shaped my childhood uh, taught me what not to do, but it also taught me what to do because she was a single mom. She hustled. She worked very hard. It was very important for her to uh, provide for us. But it, it, so I, I learned a lot of different things um, about that. And I hope other people could learn from that because I always say your childhood, um, things that happened to you when you were a child isn't your responsibility and it wasn't your fault. But as an adult, it's your responsibility to fix it. I think that's a great way to put it. And you mentioned the hustle mentality and that's clearly applied to what you've done with your fashion career. So you go to FIT, you start to build your business. What were some of the biggest challenges early on in just building out what you have today? Well, you know, I always say I didn't really have any fear. I always say my uh, success is 50% delusion, 50% determination. I think a lot um, of it was I'm not formally trained in business. I think half the success, uh, most people's success in business are you have to know what you're not good at as much as what you are good at. And I'm great at being a front person. I'm super creative, but I'm horrible at numbers and being organized. So, and I was also very trusting. So of course I made a, a lot of failures along the way, but I had a lot of successes also. So every mistake I made, you know, was very costly. I did, so um, I fixed that but I had to then pull myself up by the bootstraps. I've had lawsuits. I didn't have my contracts done correctly. A lot of things I didn't know. So I want to teach people to be better prepared. There's certain things you can do that you can put in place that aren't expensive, that can protect you along the way. I also think trust your gut instinct. Uh, and I didn't, I would be bowled over or people would be like, that's not a good idea. And then I wouldn't, I'd second guess myself. So just to really trust yourself. There's a lot of really good lessons right there. And it's hard when you first get going, right? And unfortunately, sometimes you do have to learn the hard way. And it sucks when it's a lawsuit, right? But you <laughs> yeah. know you're never going to do that again, right? Yeah, no, horrible. I mean, I, and I've had a few lawsuits that, that I've been quite in. And because I did wind up building a very big business. So, yeah, it is terrible when that happens to you. But you know what? It's, it also shows that resiliency happens. You just pick yourself up, dust yourself off and keep on going. You can't worry about what happened in the past. You just have to keep it moving. You don't get stuck. And that's what I think a lot of people get stuck on things and are just like, well, I'm right. I'm right. It's not about being right. It's about making smart business decisions. What costs you the least amount of money? Don't let it hold you back and keep moving forward. You have to adjust and adapt and see what's going on out there. And clearly you did that exactly. right, with your business and, and also with reality TV, right? So reality TV is exploding. Housewives is a huge thing. Take me back to the very beginning. How did you jump on the show? And what did you honestly expect when you got in the mix here? Yes, when I got on the show, I was doing great. At first time I was going to do it, I was doing great in my business. I wasn't ready for it. So when they had come back to me, I was like, you know what? My kids are out of the house. I had had a big lawsuit. I was like, this could be a great platform. I'm at that pivotal point in my career. I'm 49 years old. 
all my dirty laundry. I left my husband for the contractor at that point. I was like, you know what? This is not going to be a big deal. In my head, I thought it was scripted. Truthfully, DJ, I was like, this is scripted. No one's going to argue like this. Well, guess what? It wasn't. <laughs> but I was always TMI Marge, putting it out there. So I was like, this is not a big deal. But it was, it was great. I went on there. I felt like I fit into this dysfunctional family. I put the fun into dysfunction. And, but you have to be careful what you wish for, right? Everybody wants to know your business, be out there, but it's been unbelievably fabulous. I've really enjoyed it. It gives you a voice. I got to show all the phil uh, philanthropy I do, which has really worked out for me. It's um, helped the business, which has been great. And I, I've made some great friends along the way and it, it's been a great ride. So you mentioned the fact you realized it wasn't scripted. What were some of the other surprises that you were like, oh, this is a lot different than I thought it was going to be? Here. <laughs> well, I think that, that it wasn't scripted was the, was the main thing, which I was totally shocked about. Um, that p so many people watch reality TV and really relate to you and have such an opinion on your life and that you affect so many people. I always say it's a study in sociology, which was so shocking to me. I had so many women reach out to me. I'm in a bad marriage. How did you have the strength to do it? Or after I got plastic surgery, oh my God, um, you know, my I'm getting older or uh, I need a facelift. Or people were upset I got a facelift. Marge, you were the real one. You haven't had plastic surgery. Why'd you do it? Or how do you not drink when so many people around you drink alcohol? So, so many people relate to the show on so many different levels. So I really answer all my own social media because I like to interact with the people from the show. I mean, that's the best thing that you can do, right? The good, the bad, and the ugly. You get yes. your story out. You talk about all these things because listen, women weren't talking about getting plastic surgery. Women weren't talking about their childhoods in the main way. Like we need more of that. And sometimes I'm sure it's a little bit too much with social media and being out there in the public, but what does it mean to you that you can just help some folks out who may be struggling with some things? No, I'm, I'm grateful. And I think it also normalizes a lot of things that women had shame about. And I, and I think that's very, very helpful that if I can make one person feel better about themselves, it's a big difference. I just, even there's something from my book that happened, some sexual harassment along the way. And it happened in the late eighties. It was extremely common. Women could not speak up about it. I never said a word about it to anybody because in my business at that time in the garment center, if you left my company, it was happening at the next place. There was no way you were going to have a job and not happen. I'd spoken up about it in the show. So many women have written to me. Thank you for speaking up. I was ashamed. It was shameful. So it really means a lot to me when, when I could just help one person feel better about themselves, that they could relate to me, that they could open up to me. So it, it really makes a big difference and makes me feel great that I can be a part of that. It certainly should, no question about it. What's it been like seeing the reaction from people about the book, whether it's people from the show, people on social media, just you know everybody out there so far? Yes, the reaction has been fabulous. It's get, uh, the pub date is April 13th. So everybody who's got the advanced copy really, really loves it. Uh, so their opinions have been amazing. I dug very, very deep and they said, it is exactly my voice. It sounds like they're having a conversation with me, which makes me so happy because that's what I wanted. It also still has, even though there's sensitive subjects in certain parts, it still has my sense of humor. So everybody's happy about that. There's tons of stories people don't know. A lot of people don't even know that I have my own natural born son that I birthed a child. So I love that there's so many things that people found out about me and that they love the book. And then it's not just surface nonsense. It's really a lot of issues. And that's what um, makes me so happy. I think the most fascinating thing is that people watch you on TV. They think they know you. And yes. as you said, they have literally no idea what your life was like. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. I think people just see a sliver of your life. And they see you a 40, you know, an hour every week on a Wednesday night, which is great, but they don't know how you got here or, and the emotions behind it. So it's really my voice and just saying what got me here, why I feel this way, the way I grew up, the the things that I faced in life, the way I pulled myself together. I think it's really an inspirational story because everybody doesn't start out at the top and you know and that's what it really is and I think it's like if I could do it and pull myself together and be, and the point is just to wake up happy every single day everybody's comparing and despairing on social media and thinks everybody's life is so great well guess what everybody's life isn't so great it's it's what you make of it 
Exactly. Everybody's going through something, right? Every, everybody's everybody's got going through something. Yeah, I don't what care. What you see on social media is not real life. Like, it's just no, no. I mean, I'm posting when I'm going out to dinner. I mean, truthfully, I also post all the time when I don't have any makeup on and I'm sure. laying in the bed and, and I don't care. It's about being comfortable in your own skin. But people are posting the highlights of their life. Mm -hmm. So okay. here's, the, here's all the dirty details. Well, you are clearly comfortable in your own skin. Thank you for telling your story. Thank you for coming on. Really nice to meet you and best luck with everything going forward. Right? Oh, thanks so much, GJ. Pleasure to meet you. I'm so appreciative.